Hi, I'm Liliana Zapita. I'm an environmental science major from Northern Arizona University. And this summer I'm a participant for the, the National Science Foundation, REU in Water Resources. This summer I have been working on a project that deals with comparing evapotranspiration estimates from the eddy covariance method to weather data methods in South Florida. This is our study site. It is a field located in the middle of a residential area at Snapper Creek in Miami-Dade County. It's located adjacent to a water canal and right by a water well. And this is relevant because ET could be used to do a water balance assessment in order to find out if the water being pumped from the well is coming from the canal. This is the eddy covariance system. The eddy covariance estimates heat, water, carbon dioxide exchange, methane, and other trace gases. It is a system to measure ET directly. It consists of a sonic anemometer, which measures the eddies, the infrared gas analyzer, a temperature and humidity probe, and the data logger. The data is monitored by USGS. This is our weather station at Snapper Creek. This is a three cup anemometer, which measures wind speed, the temperature and humidity probe, which is found inside that white casing, the net radiometer, which consists of a bird repellent antenna and a flat to sided plate that measures incoming and reflected radiation, two rain gauges, which measure rainfall by using a tipping bucket, two pyranometers that measure the incoming and the reflected solar radiation, the soil heat flux which are buried underneath the ground, and the biometric water content sensor which is also buried underneath the ground. This is a visual representation of the cumulative ET of a month. In order to compare ET measurements from the eddy covariance system with weather data ET estimates, I had to use some reference equations and I decided to use a combination type such as the FAO Pinman Monteith, radiation based equations such as Priestley Taylor and Turk, and also water balance, which only in our case only required putting in precipitation and drainage. And the area covariance ET measurements were provided by the USGS. Once I calculated the daily ET, I was then able to calculate the cumulative ET of one month. After doing this, I compared them to one another and I found out that the eddy covariance gives a higher ET measurement than the equations. The equations give an approximation of 120 millimeters per month, while the eddy covariance measures 160 millimeters. I believe this is because the eddy covariance is taking into consideration groundwater ET, while the reference equations are not. If the water table increases, that means more water is being susceptible to evaporation and therefore ET is increasing. Participating in this REU program has been very fun and beneficial because I have learned the different ways of how water is being managed here in a subtropical area compared to how it's being managed in my hometown which is a dry arid climate.